Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Hitman Absolution. Last time, we did some of the excellent hope missions in uh, over here in Hitman. Probably the best missions in the game, especially, uh, like, the gun shop, I think, is brilliant. And Streets of Hope is fantastic. Next, unfortunately, we're heading into Dexter Industries. I'm going to skip most of Dexter Industries, because I think it's not actually very good at all. So, mostly, you're just kind of moving through areas. So, you're moving through, like, the opening area, and then you're just trying to travel around through a mill and then you're just going through a cave system and none of it's particularly interesting. Instead I've skipped forward, uh, I've skipped forward to um, the very final section of this whole area by the way, the R&D department in the factory. So what we've basically got here is we've made it into Blake Dexter's uh, factory in his R&D department where he makes all sorts of things and we've been tasked with killing some of his scientists. Now officially we're killing these guys for the same reason that we killed the gang in hope that they know something about Victoria so therefore they have to go down. Which is actually kind of a bit odd um, in the Hitmanverse because within the even within the confines of Absolution uh, basically we know for a fact that the agency created Victoria and these guys are basically trying to retro engineer her. But the problem that we get to is, at no point during the whole of Hitman Absolution do we go and deal with the original agency lab that created Victoria. Nobody ever bothers to do that, which is really quite odd when you think about it. You just, that no one ever bothers to actually go and deal with the actual source of the problem. Um, ever, at any point in the game. The, at the very end of the game, you take out, like, a couple of big wigs at the agency itself, but you never actually go and deal with the lab that produced Victoria. So, you know, the absolute source of the problem, you just don't deal with. It's, it's kind of odd. So you've got this kind of big spiral staircase down here, down to the ground floor, with labs branching off it, so you can see the doors into the labs there. Um, the reason it's quite nice is obviously you've got this, you're dressed as a security guard at the start, security guards mainly patrol outside, whereas in the labs, uh, mainly it's scientists, there's not many of the security guards in the science, there's not many of the security guards in the actual labs themselves. So you can generally cut through the labs and go around the back way to avoid trouble there. Also, I just want to show off a fantastic bit of shadow work here. They've got a projector, and if you walk in it you cast a shadow, but if you move close to the projector, the shadow gets bigger, and it's actually a very accurate, cool shadow that also reflects what you're wearing at the time. It's a genuinely nice little bit of work, that. As I was saying there, we can now go down these stairs that link the labs together in order to kind of bypass the security guard that was on the stairs and uh, work our way further down the facility. One person on his own here. He can be subdued. And here we've got scientist number one, Raymond Valentine. So I think you can see here that he is clearly working on some sort of mega gun. And while it would seem obvious that we could just kind of obviously use the gun on him when he's investigating the results, it requires a code, which you really hope so. You would really actually kind of hope that if they were developing a doomsday weapon, that there would actually, you know, you'd need a password to actually use the damn thing. Meanwhile, uh, you have to go via the staircase to get to the chemical lab here. The chemical lab gives you access to fire paste. That sounds like a very useful thing to have. And if we just pop up here, what do we have that's bright glowing? Ah, the boldness cure. It's completely changed colour, but I'm sure nobody will notice or mind. No guts, no glory, as my father said. That's right, you try out that fire paste laced boldness cure. I'm not sure what he's planning to do. I mean, is he genuinely thinking that what when he does this, he's going to see immediate head just sprouting? It's happening. I, 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 I can feel it prickling. It's going hot. It's very, ah, very hot. Hot. How? Hot. It's going to I think he tried to jump off there, but it went a bit wrong. Oh, well, never mind. His head also continues burning forever. It uh, now never stops burning. It also burns downward, which is interesting. Now for my next step, I'm going to need a scientist. There are ones you can lure off on your own, but I can't be bothered, so you guys are going to be next. So as usual, obviously now opposite rules apply. The guards now don't care who I am, but the other scientists will recognise people who aren't part of their team. So now you can move really freely between all the different labs here, but it's much, much harder to move, uh, but it's now much harder to move actually within the lab. So you want to be staying outside if possible. Now you just have to wait for the target to head into the room under the stairs there, which you'll do soon enough. 
Ah, I think our target is heading in the right direction now. Lovely. Yep, in he goes. Now we can just follow him in. Guards don't mind the scientist blatantly sneaking. He'll take a seat in his thing. We just move in. Activate the robot. Walk out nice and quick. And we can hear some nice screams going on behind us as the sample arm slightly tears him apart. Lovely. And then you just pretty much call the bridge, hide, and you're done with the level. Again, it's like the elevator back in Terminus, which is you have to summon it, and then you just have to sort of wait. And just like, hope you don't get spotted in the meantime. And then you just quietly walk across the bridge, hopefully not get spotted. I'm a scientist going into a lab, seems fairly normal to me. And then just destroy the logs that were made about Victoria. Alright, it's nice that you've referenced the Ortmeyer files, but let's just quickly sabotage all of this business and head in our way. That should be your research destroyed, lovely. Now there's one more odd little bit of the death factory that I just kind of want to draw attention to, because it's more than a little bit odd. Ooh, yep, don't get caught that early. Now I've skipped ahead a little bit here. Uh, obviously you're supposed to, you know, work your way around the hangar, take out the people, something, something, something. I've just murdered everyone because that's the uninteresting bit. The interesting bit happens when you disguise yourself as the wrestler and go into the fight itself. So you're not allowed to actually take any weapons into the arena. So you've just deposited the silver ball as you work so hard to uh, get uh, with someone else, which is interesting. And as we head down here, we prepare... And this is, this is lovely, by the way. I mean... Like, the way the arrangement is nicely, where the guy gets dragged out in front of you with a trail of blood, and you have to go through, you have to kind of go through the flag, and suddenly it's bright and everyone's cheering. It's really well constructed, but then this happens, which is we are actually going to wrestle Sanchez, a man so ridiculously tough, we know that when we got a fireball eye around his neck, we couldn't even knock him unconscious, he knocked unconscious with a single punch. I guess you could argue, oh, now now we're ready for him or something. But it's still a bit of a stretch. And the fight does indeed descend into uh, quick time events at this point. So we just punch him a bit. We just follow the instructions. And then this happens. I just took my mask off in front of a huge crowd. Victoria, where is she? And down he goes, nice and easy. This is actually the way you get Silent Assassin, by the way. And you notice I just got Silent Assassin there. Silent Assassin for having flipping murdered that guy. He's dead. And I don't know if they know it because he's not moving. And they're kind of backing off and giving me some space. So I just got Silent Assassin. And they know that that guy was just murdered, and they all saw my face, and I'm going to walk away, and that's incredibly subtle, obviously. So just get my silver ballers. And now I've picked up two guns, and apparently everyone's just happy to let me leave, having done the murder. But now let's see how you really probably ought to do it, if you're actually a hitman. So just head into this area, and just wander around, trying not to get seen. Uh, you can just go the long way around because that, though it's a wall, can be uh, vaulted over nice and easily. Now up at this end, there's basically only going to be... There's only going to be one guy. There's going to be one guy who's around the corner around there in a second. So yes, there he is. Luckily in this game, corner takedowns are a thing. So he can just be grabbed around the corner and subdued for no problem at all. Just head around the back here and you can pick up a nice key card in a disguise. Use that, you can unlock this door here and get round into the back of it. That lets you enter the grate and go through here. Sheriff Skirky's got her in his basement detention and nobody gets in or out of that place without his permission. I'll pick her up right after the fight. And with that, we learn that in fact, all of this stuff that we've been doing, all of the stuff we've been doing, three missions across about ten little subsections, and apparently, Victoria actually isn't here at all. And now, you can head through into the crowd. Now this time, the real Patriot and Sanchez are fighting. Interesting, I would have thought that, like, you know, the real Sanchez would be able to just, you know, kill the Patriot in a single hit. But maybe he's deliberately just, you know, uh, pulling his punches for the crowd. 
under the circumstances, who knows. Anyway, let's go into the crowd. Can the crowd protect me? I'm not sure if the crowd actually protect. I think, the, yeah, the crowd are offering me protection, just like they were doing, uh, just like they were doing back in the train station, which is pretty cool. And behind the bar, you'll find this little area. And now we're right up top here. Use the key card that we got earlier. We can get our way into this little side room. And collect ourselves some very useful remote explosives. You can also get a morning star here if you really want to. If you want to be super really awesome, I think that's pretty damn cool. Just continue working your way around and up as quickly as you can. C4 brick is tossed and then becomes a little time bomb, which is always fun. Luckily, mysteriously, very few people actually hear the noise, which is quite good. Very few people hear that noise. I'm not sure why. It's kind of funny, but the, the noise seems to be very, very localized. And with this, we finally made our way to the light rig, which can be released. Although, unfortunately, of course, everyone sees that. Everyone's sad. Everyone's annoyed. Uh, the um, the guy, the Patriot, was killed, and everyone's sad about that. Everyone's suspicious. This, even though it feels like the way more Hitman-y thing, is by far the worst way to complete this mission. Now, you might think after finding out all about Victoria's location, our next move would be to go and rescue Victoria. But no, at this exact moment in time, the game takes a bit of a strange little diversion. Aloha! And welcome to the Waikiki Inn! <laughs> Would you care to register, sir? Ben Franklin. Oh! Right this way, sir. We have a continental breakfast from 7 to 9 in the Tiki Lounge. A happy hour is from 5 to 8 in the Tiki Lounge. My ties are two for one pina coladas or... Anything less festive. Can I bring a bottle to your room, Mr. Franklin? Something brown. Yes, sir. It's funny because he's really excited about the Tiki Lounge and Hitman 47 is all professional. Absolution has these kind of moments of comedy and Hitman always was a very funny game but it was a very dark, surreal type of comedy to it. Ah, then this happens. Say hello to the agency's other staff. These are the saints. Go with God, motherfucker. And they are indeed nuns in latex fetish gear. For some reason. The agency, I feel like I should remind you, is of course an international assassination organization that, you know, goes around committing covert acts where being a silent assassin is uh, ultimately uh, what they're seeking to achieve. But they also apparently also just have some latex fetish nuns in a bus who go around killing people with rocket launchers. Because of course that's what the agency has, you know, as a sideline from its silent assassination business. Now, we've got obviously our suit here. So yes, this is a little interlude where we get the agency catches up with us and we finally have to, you know, deal with the agency situation to some extent where uh, the agency are attacking us and we have to fight our way out. But like much of Absolution, we're kind of playing by nobody gets left alive rules here. So, you know, all of these people, even though they're just assassin sent to killers and they don't know anything about me, they don't think about Victoria, Hitman 47 over the course of this mission has to kill like, I think like eight of them? It's eight or nine of the latex fetish nuns and they all need to go down. I guess people just got a bit confused because, you know, 47 has something to do with Catholicism, which they picked up from Hitman 2 Silent Assassin and sort of worked into the story because he goes and drops... Victoria off at the orphanage, the Catholic orphanage. So they kind of thought, oh, so the agency must have Catholic links. So they've also got nuns. But the thing is, 47 didn't go around in fetish priest outfits, and these guys shouldn't go around in fetish nun outfits, because it doesn't make sense for an organization that's desperately trying to not draw attention to itself. Like, this is the last thing an assassination agency that acts in the shadows ought to do, but 
it's, I don't know. I mean, this was one of the things they put in the trailer. So I guess they just wanted fetish nuns because they thought it would be an eye-catching trailer. And after that, they just thought, eh, screw it. You know what? We made them for the trailer. We might as well give them a mission too. The other particularly odd thing is, normally like in the Hitman franchise, you kind of work under the assumption that the reason everyone acts as they do is because they don't know Hitman's coming for them. You know, guards will respond to strange noises and wander off into a corner because they don't know that an assassin has just kind of thrown a bottle there and is about to garrot them silently to take their disguise. They're not too suspicious of people wearing the same disguises as them because, you know, they're not expecting someone who's quite good at disguising themselves to be able to well, come, you know, come in, sneak in and steal some of the disguises their friends but mysteriously in this particular instance everyone acts like they don't know what hitman's modus operandi is they'll respond to strange noises they'll turn their backs and go off into dark corners on their own they'll just generally act like they've no idea how hitman operates even though these people because they're from the agency are really the one people in the world that should absolutely definitely know how 47 does operate here. These two guys are just going off on their own. That guy's now standing with his back to everything. Kind of anyone can get around the back of him really easily. This guy's decided he's going to wander off on his own. Yep, that would have been a fantastic opportunity to grab him. So, you know, and obviously yeah, they could all be lured behind things nice and simple. This guy's even decided he's wandered off by himself. And in a moment, it'll go and check out that nice noise. Oh yeah, you better you better just wander off and check that out by yourself. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Just wander off and check that out by yourself, eh? But anyway, I'm just gonna skip over most of this mission because it's not very interesting. The only good bit is the last bit. Welcome to the cornfield. Uh, the final part of this three-part mission, where we now have to uh, officially eliminate the last of the uh, the last of the saints, the uh, the fetish nuns there that we've got one of. So, as you can see here, we're out of the uh, the little kind of complex of the whole area, which was always one of the more annoying bits anyway, so that's fine. So we were stuck in complex in a fairly linear area up to this point, but now we've got this big open area to play with, which has got some interesting ideas. I mean, the cornfield effectively acts like the crowd system, which is, I think, what makes it good. And the best bit is this thing over here. The fact that you can disguise yourself as a scarecrow. So this is amazing by the way this is a fantastic idea and it's great fun so we've got this lovely cornfield here which is awesome we can just kind of hide in the cornfield and move around and i love it because you can effectively stalk people through the corn which is great fun but just stay low move around it kind of it really gives you the feeling of stalking and hunting which is awesome because that's really what it ought to all be about so we can just sneak up behind this guy grot him quietly and just bring him down around and hopefully no one will ever find him. And as you can see, this is actually quite a large area, which is always, which is really, really cool. I do like the fact that this is such a big, large area here. The coolest thing, however, is if you're disguised as a scarecrow, then you can put yourself up here and you are officially hiding. In the same way that, you know, if you were a cleaner and you're mopping something, the way a scarecrow hides is just by putting himself up on this little thing here. And even the crows come and like sit on you, which is really quite cute. Even though you are kind of obviously moving there. Uh, Hitman's like, not, he's not even making much of an effort to stay still. His head is very clearly moving. This is also one of the really pretty levels of Hitman Absolution. Hitman Absolution had some good graphics and some less good graphics, but the cornfield with the sunset is really quite lovely. So I do think they did a very nice job on the graphics here. You also attract, as time goes by, an increasingly large number of birds. They just kind of keep landing on you, which I think it might be a bit of a joke. And if so, that's the sort of humour I like, the more subtle humour of the old Hitman games, where if you just stay still, just more and more birds flipping land on you. They just seem to keep coming. It's really quite good. Anyway, let's get down and kind of let them just uh, take care of that. There we are. Let's get down and shoo off those birds and see if we can get ourselves a couple of people. Because again, this is this is more of an open level. There's more interesting stuff to do. It's just a more interesting level overall. This will be the only time you see a scarecrow fighting a latex nun today, I dare say. So yeah, it's just a fun idea, really well put together. This kind of concept of being able to hide in the cornfields and stalk and hunt and hide bodies in the cornfield. But ultimately, the main targets won't be in the cornfield for the most part. They'll be in these open areas, so you need to kind of find the clever ways to uh, isolate all the targets here. And you can pick off their bodyguards one by one as they go into the cornfields if that's what you want to do. Or you can kind of find all the clever ways. It's just a lovely mission. It's a good mission, and I just wish this had been the only part of the Attack of the Saints. They just got rid of the whole much less interesting bit 
uh, with uh, in the actual motel itself, this would have been a much stronger level. Or my personal favourite, sneak around here to the back of the cornfield, but still uh, nice and central. And there is a nice little patch around the outside of the final enclosure that the nun walks through. And just a quick throw. There we go. And just sneak away, having thrown a nice screwdriver right into her head. Admittedly, you know, a few people see that and a few people mind and something, something, something. And then mysteriously you have to go and find the command post, which is just a ringing phone in the middle of this area. But okay, fine, whatever. 47 just walks away. That's pretty much the end of that little interlude. I swear, they just came up with the idea they wanted fetish nuns in for the trailer and they invented the mission later. It's so baffling. Sturkey's Law, we know Victoria is being held by the sheriff in Hope, so we're heading back into Hope. Location for the ransom exchange is set. Yes, sir. Blackwater Park. I've already assigned three teams for you. Good. We get the girl, make sure she's secure, then we take them all out and get our money back. Ransom is not in the agency budget this year. <laughs> and we discover that, in fact, Travis and Dexter have come to an agreed price for Victoria, but Travis is planning to betray Dexter anyway. Hope, South Dakota. <laughs> to watch the myth die. But first, it sounds like they're heading to Hope just like I am, so we've got to have a couple of surprises waiting for us there. And we start in a very pretty courthouse, 47 trying to find his way into jail, figuring that court is probably the fastest way to do it. Next matter of order, Dexter Industries versus Kevin Zimmerman, trespassing. Where's the prisoner, Sheriff? <clears throat> Your Honor, uh, the uh, prisoner had a uh, unfortunate accident in his cell this morning and... Uh, He's on his way to the infirmary. Hmm. I see. You think he'll pull through? <laughs> Not looking good. I... He fell pretty hard. <coughs> Case dismissed. Him and Absolution, they're taking yet a rather kind of nice, easy way of establishing who the bad guy is. It's the person who runs a jail, but kills the inmates when he doesn't want them to, you know, have a case against Dexter Industries. Now, what I do like is, obviously, when you start off, there is a little court case going on here. And if you want to, you can basically just sit here and watch the entire thing. There's a full script planned for what this crazy conspiracy theorist who thinks the UN is trying to control us with gnomes, and by the way, they are, what kind of he thinks and what, you know, and the judge kind of speaking to him and there's a prosecution defense. Everyone's got a script. So you can actually, I, I really like that little detail that there's that full script there. It's very, very cool. But obviously we're not interested in that. We basically just want to get ourselves into, uh, we just want to get ourselves uh, through that door at the back there to get into the prison. Obviously you can just murder everyone, but there's a lot of fun ways. This I think is one of two missions in Hitman Absolution that even though they don't have anyone to kill and there's no killing required whatsoever, you're basically just trying to get from A to B, work really, really well. The other one being the gun shop. I think this is one of the strongest missions in the game. It's a very interesting little mission with lots of fun little ways of doing it. And like all the good missions in Absolution, it's nice and open. So you can see we've got lots of rooms around here. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. There's toilets. There's And there's lots of NPCs floating around, which is pretty much kind of, you know, a very good way pretty much all the good levels in, uh, in Absolution work. So we've got security rooms. We've got ourselves a nice little... Uh, we've got ourselves a locked room here with a key card. So surveillance wiring leads back to this room. So if we get a key card, we can go in here. We've got a staff only area, which looks a little bit more open. So this could be a good place to start potentially. So if we were wanting to break in, just kind of try and find ourselves a disguise, this could be an excellent place to start. So let's just maybe just try this one, this on this particular occasion. Let's just get to this guy here. Yep, this seems like an excellent place to be. Uh, what's going to be the best angle for this guy? Yeah, uh, I guess a corner takedown. Yep, attack! There we go, attack. Nice corner takedown. 
dump him in this here cupboard. No one ever opens cupboards in Hitman Absolution. Obviously, cupboards are just for disposing bodies. Conveniently, nobody ever wants to use the cupboard for anything, which is very, very useful indeed. So this room's where you get yourself a shotgun if you happen to be feeling like going on the shotgun massacre way. And of course, we've got a police disguise if that's what we need. I prefer to just wander around in the normal suit, because well, normal suit lets you go everywhere, because you are who you think you are. Now, rather hilariously on this occasion, unlike in the uh, the bar back in Hope, uh, throwing an item at the judge is considered a crime. So at this point, everyone's decided that I'm going to, you know, just... Uh, everyone's decided this is a capital offence. Which, in all fairness, while it isn't in Hope, I can understand why it would be. So it's actually kind of funny. Uh, oh, I wasn't actually planning to fake surrender. I was just planning to actually surrender. Alright, fine. There we go. No, no, don't shoot your friend. Don't shoot your friend, the cop. The judge flees, obviously. That that guy should have taken a shot earlier. <laughs> he was right behind me. Oh, dear. Uh-oh. I've, I've lost everything. Oh, flip. And hilariously, like pretty much any scenario where you're in trouble, um, the guards can never find you um, in an air vent. So if you want to, if you just run into the toilets and then run through into the air vent, eventually everything will go back to normal because the guards can't not go down through hostile, um, through to hunting through to cautious, suspicious, and eventually normal. So you could theoretically actually just kind of do any violence you want and just wait long enough in the air vents and it'll all work fine. But let's not do that. Let's do something a bit more interesting. So you can have a little wander around outside here and just kind of go around the outside of the area. Now, obviously, this area here is the private area, but that's never really stopped 47 in the past. Sneak through this area, this door right here. Yep, this is fine. Got ourselves a nice cop here. Another good one to get. So we kind of, we saw earlier there was that one in the room. Or you could have this one here. Doesn't really matter. Both of these are both pretty good for getting hold of people. And by dumping him in the container, we'll get ourselves a little bit of instinct we can use too. Got a police bat on here as well. That's not actually a weapon so much. It's a throwing distraction thingy. Let's move around the police. Should have enough. The police kind of move around. They're not kind of particularly good at guarding the situation, so... It's not too difficult to just make your way through. You can pretty much stop using instinct here because you go back into hiding. And then just another bit of walk around. Tiny spot of instinct will get you to where you need to go. Hide back here if you need to. Yep, no problem at all. This room back here will get you another good uh, shotgun. But this one's got a bit more ammo in it, which is always welcome. Together with a tomahawk that you can see there. Same as we had in Lenny's mission. What you actually want here is this ledge that you can climb up onto. It's not desperately obvious that that was what you were allowed to do, but uh, that is indeed what the game was trying to encourage you towards. And then climb through. And we are into, as the flag might tell you, if you've been paying attention to the little kind of flavour text that was earlier, the judge is a court of British and is very proud of the fact, as you should be, because Britain is amazing. Uh, so all of a sudden we've got a few people dotted around here that we can use. The judge himself is sitting in his seat, which is right there. And he has indeed gone full British as well. You've got teapot and some nice, very dainty cups of tea there. Do like that. Very, very nice. Not sure why his British flag is so creased. Like, I suppose it's supposed to be, like, waving, but it's kind of odd that it would be displayed in that way. Anyway, when you're ready for him to actually come and uh, pay attention to you, you can just turn off the TV here. And after a moment, he'll kind of pop in here. Lovely, just wait for the door to close. And we can murder him with his own golf club. There we go. Sadly, again, there's not any desperately interesting animations uh, in this game, which is very, very sad. So you've got your key card, you've got your disguise. You can uh, bring him here. This is by far the funnest way to do it, obviously. Becoming the judge is obviously what everyone wants to do. And it's also like the chef in the very first mission. It's a good disguise because... Or at least it would be if I hadn't been just apparently the tiniest bit too slow there. So now the guards are all decided to come for me. Brilliant. That's bad luck. You need to just be a tiny bit faster than I was to get the judge thrown away in the thing. Otherwise, everything goes a bit wrong. You're shooting the wrong way, which guards in Absolution do all the time. They're very... 
I mean, they're supposed to be realistic that they can't figure out exactly where you are, so sometimes they won't shoot in the exact right location. But sometimes they will just overtly shoot in a, the wrong location that doesn't make any sense for them to be shooting in. So yes, had I not just messed that up, unfortunately been a bit unlucky with the timing, I would have been able to come through here, immediately sentence the uh, sentence our little conspiracy theory nuts to jail, and just immediately kind of walk to the jail freely, because I would have ended the proceedings, so therefore I would have been free to wander off. There's lots of other interesting ways though, of course, Let's quickly show off two of those. Just head upstairs the moment the uh, the mission begins, and you can see there that we've got a, one of the uh, the court clerks heading upstairs. You recognise him because he's dressed in the snazzy fashion. I like him; he's quite cool. One of the security guards decides to walk out of this area, which is very convenient. Just as this guy decides he's going to start walking into it. Wait a minute, and you might just get a good chance to sneak into the library. Yep, this seems like an excellent time while he's right in the middle here. Throttle him while he's in the middle and no one will actually see it. Make sure that door is closed and dump the body in here. That is how you get your county clerk uniform. You can't do it the moment he goes in, but you can get pretty close. Okay, that closes. Get the disguise. Nice and quick. And now, obviously, the only people that recognise me will be the other county clerks, so we're absolutely fine. The police apparently don't recognise the fact that there wasn't a bold man here a second ago. So that's absolutely fine. So you just hang out with the police. Everything's okay. As the county clerk, you're allowed, obviously, into all sorts of staff areas and so forth, which is very good. So we can get ourselves a nice book on jurisprudence and so forth, just for the sake of uh, having a distraction item if we need one. But I don't think we actually no, need that. So that's one person killed, unfortunately, which is why we're on the minus score. But hey, no problem. The bare minimum, what we do now have is that we are a county clerk, so we are allowed to go into the courtroom itself. Some people in the courtroom are going to recognise us, but that's okay. We can now basically just cross the floor using the little instinct that we have picked up, and we should be absolutely fine. You can just go in here, that's not a problem. I mean, it's a bit of a problem, but it's not too bad. You can just walk straight on through, through here. Someone's suspicious, but that's fine. The disguise is blown, doesn't even matter. The guy is now just kind of running backwards and forwards. That guy was even pointing a gun at me, but he can't actually find me. They can never find you in the vents. So this is the second of three ways I've now officially messed up. So I may as well go for the trifecta in a minute. Well, it looks to me like they're all looking the wrong way at the moment. So this might still be a good moment to just like little hop down very quickly. And just very quickly. Yep, pick the lock. And that's how you get out of this mission. There you go. While it's a little bit problematic, that is indeed a nice easy way. And had I just got, you know, slightly more, uh, had I just got a tiny bit more into it, I would have been able to walk across the floor and done that flawlessly. Upstairs, this guy will occasionally just decide to leave the, uh, the uh, TV alone, so you can turn it off from up here as well. If you do that without a disguise, there's an excellent chance you'll get seen doing it, but that's fine. Uh, while they mind, they don't go into hunting mode or anyway. That will disrupt the trial in a minute. Now, in the meantime, head into the men's. You want to be getting into the men's as soon as possible and entering because you have just disturbed the trial, which means it will break for recess in a moment. So you can see there by the flames and instinct, our chap is already on his way. And indeed, he is on his way to try and make his escape out of the window because of the injustice of the UN Gnome program being upheld by this corrupt judge. In a sense, this judge is corrupt, but he hasn't been paid off by the UN on account of the whole gnome situation. That is, that is untrue. So just give it a moment. And we are now deemed to be trespassing because the toilets are locked and private while the defendant is in them. No one else is allowed in there at the time. So we just basically let him go past, over to the window where he'll try and escape. There we go. And he won't get very far, however. Let's just quickly subdue him and his lovely tin foil hat. And I'm sure you see where this is going. We've been one of the clerks of the court. We've been the, uh, we've been the judge himself. Now it's time to be the defendant. And just quickly, before he does indeed count to ten, we just put him back in here. I mean, I guess the tin foil hat means it's not quite as obvious that it's the same person, because for once... Uh, for flipping once, it's obviously, uh, the bold head is not obvious, but it, I still look very different to that guy. For example, he has a beard and I don't, but alright, when you're done, just Your step out. Put in our finest tinfoil hat for this, by the way. This is our good tinfoil hat, we didn't use the cheap tinfoil for that. So now we are allowed into the court itself. 
A judge is given considerable latitude in sentencing cases such as this. Context is taken seriously. In all my years upon the bench, I don't believe I've ever sentenced a man to much more than the minimum sentence for the crimes of which this court has found you guilty. In your case, however, I'm availing myself of the opportunity to hand down the maximum penalty. Two years confinement in a state penitentiary, minus time served, and a fine of $10,000. Confinement to be served at Rapid City Minimum Unit. Done. Someone make the necessary arrangements and get this convict into a keep. You heard his honor. Get a move on. Let's go. So as a result of that, I am now basically actively encouraged to go and put myself into a cell. Lovely. So that's pretty much exactly where I wanted to go in the first place. This guy will open up the door for me because obviously I don't have the key card. And I'm now supposed to be in here because I'm guilty. So I'm going in as like that. Lovely. Then just open up the door. I'd have had a better score obviously if I hadn't killed someone at the beginning, but never mind. And there we are into the holding cells. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, with the courthouse completed, I think I'm going to call it a part there for this week. And we'll pick this up next week where we are going to finish the game. We're going to have the uh, remainder of dealing with Sheriff Sturkey. We're going to go to Blackwater Park. We're going to have to deal with Layla and Dexter as well as the ending of the game. All of that we will do in a single part next week to wrap this up. And in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. It's been many a true nerd and this has been Hitman Absolution. Thank you very much and goodbye. Down, 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 get off it. Just hop off. Oh, oh, oh no, oh that was wrong! I would untie and save you, you understand, but there is a hovercraft. I really hope the bear's not still around. The bear is still around! The bear's still around! The bear's still around! Good news, guys! Elephants here! Hey!